Salut! And welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to talk about Booleans and optional or nullable values and errors and what they have in common. We're going to start in TypeScript today, and the sample problem we're solving is a web scraper. Well, a fake web scraper. My read document function just pretends to do I.O. It looks for substrings inside the URL it's supposedly loading, and then acts differently based on that. So if we see fail in the URL, we throw an error. And by using this convenience function here, I can use it as an expression in my question mark colon chain. If I try to throw an error like this, as I'm doing in my other function, I now have a compiler error because throw isn't an expression. If I wanted to use throw directly here, I'd have had to separate it into separate condition and not part of this whole expression. And if we don't have an error, then we get a document back. A document has an optional head, a head has an optional title. And so in this case, we don't have a head at all. In this case, our head has no title. Here we have an empty title, and otherwise we get a title with actual text in it. And note here that our throw error function has a return type of never, meaning that this never has any value at all. It doesn't ever exist. If this condition comes in here, then return never happens. So return definitely always does return just a doc. And given a document, we can make a summary of it, which just has the title, or undefined if there had been no title, and OK for whether there was an error or not. And if we have a document, we have no error, so OK is true. Also, I'm taking advantage of the null coalescing dot operator here that's relatively new to ECMAScript. Without it, I could have taken advantage of the falsiness of undefined in JavaScript and done doc.head and doc.head.title, where it's OK to mix and match types here. And know that this question mark dot is a single operator. Meanwhile, I can also, for convenience, read and build a summary in a single call. Here I read a document and build the summary. But if there was an exception, I return a default summary instead, with an undefined title and OK of false. So here I can have a peer function to process my data, and convenience functions with potential side effects. I can also make another kind of summary, which is simpler, that just says whether I have a non-empty title. But here I'm also allowing to say undefined in the case the title wasn't there at all. And I take advantage of the falsiness of empty strings to convert the title to a Boolean. And just like build summary, is title non empty is a pure function. And I provide a separate convenience function of read whether title non empty that does the reading and the very simple summary. However, read whether title non empty allows any exception in read doc to propagate, unlike read and build summary that gave a default value instead. And this isn't obvious in my function declarations. Then down in main, I run through a URL for each of the potential cases. I build a summary and print it. And I also print a version of the title that defaults to empty string in the case of undefined, using the logical or operator. And for read whether title on empty, because it's throwing, I need to catch the error case here. And I've chosen to print the same kind of message either way, but just print the error where the title assessment would have been. And then just like I coalesced the potentially undefined title into a string, here I've condensed the potentially undefined or error into whether we had a non-empty title. And in the error case, it's always going to be false. So let's see what it does. For the document with a title, we get the title here, and it was OK. For the document with an empty title, we get an empty string, and it also is OK. For our missing title and missing head, we get the same behavior in each case, which is what we want to show that we've done properly. The title's undefined in both cases, but both cases were OK. And in the failure case, we have an undefined title, and we weren't OK. And instead of a designation of non-empty title or undefined, we get our error instead. But our coalesce titles are always going to be a string. Title of good, empty, 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 empty. That's what we're seeing from here. Or in the case of our coalesced Booleans, we have true or false, 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 false. And you may or may not want the extra summarized versions, depending on what you're doing. Now this is fun, but let's take a look at a different version of TypeScript that doesn't throw any exceptions, and instead returns them. So here, instead of throwing an error and needing a convenience function to make it an expression, I just simply return an error. And TypeScript will actually check to see whether I've said I can do that. Meaning, I have to say if I want to be allowed to return an error, whereas there was no way to express this with a throwing version. And therefore, in read and build summary, if I say I'm not returning an error, it means I'm not returning one. And I had to do custom handling for the error case here, instead of using try catch, for example. But build summary hasn't changed. Is title non empty is also unchanged from before. 
but read whether title and empty now can return boolean or undefined or error. And the implementation is slightly more complicated than before because before the exception just propagated. But here I have to explicitly handle that case and return it instead of calling is title on empty with an invalid value. Finally, at the end, my has title is simply going to be my Boolean or undefined or error. So I just have one print case here. And to coalesce the error into a false, I've again checked explicitly for it. And what I found interesting was at least in this case, my throwing version was longer than my error returning version, despite some of the individual functions being longer. But just to prove that it works, here we get the same result as before. So having seen both an error throwing and an error returning version in TypeScript, let's take a look at Rust, which always emphasizes the idea of returning errors and has no exception throwing. As before, we have a doc with an optional head, which I've chosen to box for heap allocation purposes. And we have a head with an optional string. Our summary also has an optional string and a bool OK. And for our error type, I've chosen to use a wrapped string because that was sufficiently convenient for my needs. But in any case, in Rust, a function that might fail returns a result type. And both option and result are different from what we saw in TypeScript. In TypeScript, something that might be undefined or not is still a flat value. And a value or an error is still a flat value in the sense that you just have a value and you can check what type it is as you want to. But in Rust, option is a structured enum type. If you have a value, it's always wrapped in the sum case. Result is also a structured type. And if you have your value, it's wrapped in the OK. But now instead of just none for the alternative, you have an error case, which also can store a value. So option and result are structured wrapped types that contain things inside of them, even though technically they can sneakily optimize such that, for example, a null pointer is interpreted as the none case for option. But that's an optimization behind the scenes and not part of the API as we see it. So anyway, down here in read doc, I again am wrapping my error in the error case or my document in the OK case. And I could have put OK doc, OK doc, OK doc in each case and not done this nesting. But I felt like it made it clear which were the OK cases and which was the error case by using this code structure here. And as before in TypeScript, build summary is just a pure function, doesn't do any I.O., and it doesn't worry about errors. Read and build summary here takes care of that for us. We read a document and we match on the OK branch and build a summary, or we match on the error branch and return a default with a none for title and an OK of false. For our title non empty summary, we have an optional Boolean where we also seem to have a question mark dot operator, but it doesn't mean the same thing. And in fact, we can put spaces here because the question mark is one operator and the dot is separate. Question mark hides a logic that says if this here was none, then return that none immediately from my function and don't keep going. So it's sort of like a never type. And if the title was none, also return that none immediately. And if not, keep going and we call is empty on our string. But not up before we're done because we're trying to say if it's not empty or has content. And then here's our convenience wrapper as well that does both the IO and the error management as well as calling our peer function in the case of no problems. This question mark for result types returns the error immediately. Otherwise, we're working with just a document and we have to rewrap the OK case before we're done. Alternatively, I could have used this map function where our document is unwrapped from result internally here, but the overall expression stays wrapped the whole time, which is why in this case, I don't wrap OK around it. These are two alternative implementations for the same thing. And down inside of main, I can read and build summary, print it out, and I can read whether the title's not empty and print that out as well. For my coalesced cases, I can say unwrap or else empty string where this looks like an or here, but it really is just leading my anonymous lambda function. And by using a function here, I get the short circuiting effect that we expect from Boolean logical operators. I either have a title or I run something. I don't run this in the case the title already existed. And down here for my potential error title, I can unwrap or provide a default false in the case of an error, and then unwrap that optional into a Boolean. Let's run it. And we see here the same behavior as before, only we see explicitly the OKs and the sums, or the error with our error, unlike in TypeScript where we just saw the unwrapped values because things weren't wrapped. 
and we could have unwrapped our error in either order. Here we unwrapped the error first, but we could have unwrapped the optional inside of the result, and then unwrapped our result into a Boolean. So having seen a case of throwing errors, or returning errors, but with unwrapped values, or in Rust where everything is wrapped and structured, let's take a look at some other languages and see how they express themselves. So let's take a look at Zig. In Zig, we also have a doc with an optional head, which I've again chosen to use as a pointer. Pointers by default cannot be null in Zig. And each head has an optional string for a title. The summary is like before, only I've made a custom format function so that my title gets printed out as a string rather than an array of bytes as numbers. I've made some other convenience functions as well. But here inside of read doc, we have approximately the same behavior as before. I either return an error or a document, where syntactically I don't do any obvious wrapping here. And this is my syntax in Zig for saying what errors I might have or the value I'm looking for by using this bang symbol. My allocation might give an out of memory error, and I explicitly made my own bad read case. And in Zig, if you don't say what kind of errors you might have, it just infers it from the content of your function. But just like Rust, Zig returns errors, it does not throw exceptions. And as before, build summary does not care about errors and doesn't do any I.O. And I take advantage of if expressions for operating on nullable or optional values, where you capture the value here in the case it wasn't null. So I can then work on head.title directly. Otherwise, if the head was null, my title is also going to be null. An alternative implementation is here in the comment, where instead of using the special null checking if, I've explicitly checked for the null, where I also have to use this question mark to assert that the head was non-null in order to get at my title. So, so far, three languages with question marks, but they all mean different things. And read and build summary reads a document and provides an alternative value by using the catch keyword in case there was an error. Although I'm taking advantage of this idea of a never type again by returning early with my not okay summary structure. And because this returns early, the only possible value is read doc. So my document is always good for passing into my build summary function. His title on empty is also pure, and he's the same structure for extracting non-null values. Then finally, in read whether title on empty, I use the try keyword, which is like the question mark in Rust, for early return of any errors, such that is title on empty always gives a doc to work on. My return type is possibly error, optional, bool. And down here inside of main, to coalesce down to an empty string for a null title, I use the or else operator which is like the catch operator, except it works on nullable or optional values, whereas catch works on possibly error values. Let's run this. And we get the same behavior as before, only we don't see any structure in the output, even if those values might have some structure internally. But we do have to use special casing to handle them. Let's see Odin now. Again, we have a document with a pointer to a head, and all pointers are potentially nullable in Odin, so I don't say that explicitly here. The head has an optional string, which I've chosen to use the maybe type for, which effectively creates a union type where one of the options is that it's nil. And for my error type, I've chosen to do a wrapped string, like I did in Rust. Unlike Zig, Odin lets you pick your own error type as long as it's compatible with the conventions of the language. More common than a maybe string is probably to use an enum, but this works as well. And for potentially failing functions, the convention in Odin is to have multiple return values the result you care about, and an error. And the convention is only one of these will be non-nil. So in the case of a bad URL, I set the error and return early. Otherwise, I build my document and return that. Build summary again is pure, and I explicitly check for a non-nil head. For read and build summary, I check if I have an error, and if so, give a default summary, which by default will have a nil head and an okay of false. Otherwise, I build the summary on my document. Is title is also pure like before, and my convenience wrapper is read whether title line empty. And here in is title line empty, I return nil for a nil head or title. Otherwise, I return whether the title has content in it. And we get yet another use for the question mark that's different from our previous three languages. Here, this is not a non null assertion, rather, it's shorthand for my union assertion. I could have said what's here in the comment instead, but because my only option for a maybe string is either nil or string, Question mark means just infer the type that I would have told you. And down here in read whether title on empty, I can use the or return keyword of Odin, 
that checks for the existence of an error and returns that early if I followed the Odin conventions. So this is like the try of zig or the question mark of Rust. And down here inside of main, I've used the or else keyword to provide the default empty string for a nil title. And or else also works for coalescing down to false. Let's run it. And we see the same kind of output as before, again, with no explicit formatting of our wrapped values, whatever's happening internally here. Before we're done, let's take a look at Kotlin as well. It's sort of fun because it feels in some ways like TypeScript, except it lets you use more kinds of things in expression locations. So here for our fail case, I can throw an exception as if it's an expression, and it has a never type, which again means that as a whole, this function can only return a doc if it doesn't throw. Build summary is pure again and takes advantage of the same question mark dot operator that we saw in TypeScript. And I can use try catch as an expression as well, where in my catch case, I return early. So again, this expression is only ever a document and I can call build summary with it. Is title and empty again uses the null coalescing dot. I have an optional Boolean. I have invisible existence of exceptions and so on. So in some ways it feels a lot like the TypeScript except for the fact that more things work as expressions here. Then in main, I can use the Elvis operator to get my default empty string and catch my exception to store it in my has title variable, which is of any type because there aren't ad hoc union types in Kotlin. But I can branch on the type here and coalesce down to a false. Let's run it. And we're gonna wait a little bit because Kotlin is optimized for use inside of an IDE and not from the command line. Here we see are definitely not wrapped types, and overall the same behavior as in previous languages, including a printout of our exception for the error case. And before we're done, just like in TypeScript, let's do a return version for Kotlin, but in this case using the built-in result type that comes with the standard library. Unlike Rust, you don't say what the error type might be because it's always going to be of type throwable. Here we have result.failure instead of error and result.success instead of okay. But we have made it explicit this might be a failing function. And in read and build summary, we can do get or else on our result type, which feels sort of like the functions we had in Rust. And again, because return can be used as a never type, it's basically saying read doc or return, which can feel a little bit like the or return of Odin, but with the standard return semantics. And it may have been clear to use the fold function of result, which lets me explicitly say what I want on the success and failure cases. Is title on empty again doesn't change, but read whether title and empty has to deal with the wrapped result, where I can either map it, and this is automatically a result, and only unwrapped in the middle of this callback function, or I could have done the unwrapping and return early, like the question mark in Rust, and then rewrapped with result.success, like OK in Rust. And it's interesting that in the Rust case, the unwrapping and wrapping was shorter than the map, but not so in Kotlin, in part because we don't have that early exit question mark operator. Then finally in main, we have a pretty convenient coalescing down to our false for the error case using our result type. So here we've got to see how we can use Boolean operators and truthy and falsy logic or null handling or optional handling things that may or may not apply in same or different ways to optional values or potentially error values. And in Rust, they purposely modeled their function names to feel like Booleans when you're dealing with potentially error results. So I hope this has been fun, and I hope to get back to this topic again in the near future with Haskell and Monads. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Au revoir.